this is Charlie Montatuyella with Blue Bear Flutes, our website bluebearflutes.com where you can find some of the greatest Native American flutes on the web as well as so many so many other things that you probably couldn't imagine. But anyway, uh, here on YouTube we have become pretty well known for making Native American flutes and uh, having lessons on how to play as well as how to make Native American flutes. We have countless on both subjects and uh, I wanted to share something with you that I've been using for some time myself, something that's just pretty cool, pretty dang miraculous, um, and uh, I'll just, I'll get right to it because this is the coolest thing. For the longest time, people have asked me for a flute that they could keep in a backpack or in their pocket or in their purse or somewhere simple. So I've made small flutes for a long time. And of course the problem with small flutes is they're high toned. And uh, that's not really a problem because originally Native American flutes, as I've discussed in other videos, were primarily high toned. Uh, we've made some that were a little bit larger, that had a little bit lower tone. But people always want really low tone flutes and they want to be able to take them anywhere with them. So um, a little while back I had made one of these just to see what it would be like and, and really for my own use so that I could have something to travel around with me and to take everywhere to play whenever I want to. And um, when I, uh, I put it together, I thought, you know, this is something really cool that somebody is probably gonna make billions of and, and sell them, or maybe I should make billions of them and sell them, I don't know. But over time, I've decided just about like everything else I do, I would really rather share this with you for free so that you could know how to do it yourself. If I decide to make them and sell them, more power to me. If you sell them and make them, more power to you. It's all good. This is something that I just, I really enjoy too much to keep it a secret. So having said that, you'll need a couple of things. Oh, and the title of this video is, is really about making a, a low E PVC backpack flute for under three bucks. And that's at this time, I'm not gonna say the date in this video. Y'all know I don't like to do that, but, but at the time this video was made, this flute costed under $3. And the cool thing about it is really that it's not, you know, permanently affixed. You can take it apart and put it back together whenever you want to, which is pretty nice for being able to stick in your back pocket, carry in a backpack, or do anything like that. So just to show you at the time the video was made, forgive me for inflation and other people that say I can't get this or I can't get that or I can't do this or I can't do that. You know, I don't know if I've ever told y'all, but my kids when they were growing up were not allowed to say I can't do anything. You could imagine. How frustrating that would be for a lot of people in this day and age had they had to grow up in my household so it's just my wife and my rule that if there's something they want to do they can do it so um, I have a couple of couplings at the time once again this video was made I bought these from a local hardware store uh, which we've had Lowe's Home Depot um, let's see oh gosh there's just so many hardware stores small mom and pop shops that you can go to Ace Hardware uh, I know that there's some big chains that I'm missing, but those are the ones that are around me. And I've got two one inch diameter, one inch PVC couplings. They costed me 55 cents a piece. You'll need both of those. This is a reducer, and it's only really for aesthetic and for the mouthpiece's purpose. Um, a lot of people really like to have a smaller mouthpiece. You don't have to have a small mouthpiece because you don't have to stick this in your mouth. You can put your lips up to it, you know? It's not something you gotta, don't do that. Anyway, uh, and this could be a choking hazard, so if you're under the age of whatever, don't stick this in your mouth, okay. So this is one inch on one end, and it's three quarters of an inch on the other end. Really, I just use it for looks. It cost me a dollar 48, and so you can see, out of the $2.74 this flute costed me to make, this one took up a lot of the cost. So it's not really completely important and necessary that you do that. The uh, PVC, you'll need a stick of one inch PVC, preferably not uh, Schedule 40 PVC, preferably especially not Schedule 80 PVC or anything thicker. I have a PVC here that is very lightweight. It's used for irrigation. In previous videos, people have commented that they can't find Schedule 20 PVC. That's because the people at their local retail stores don't know that this is Schedule 20 PVC. It should say on it somewhere, but if it doesn't, it's used for irrigation. It's a really easy product to get a hold of. It's something that is incredibly lightweight. It has a wall thickness of somewhere under an eighth of an inch, and somebody could probably post in the comments exactly how thick this wall is to make sure I keep my facts correct, but it's very thin, to say the least. It doesn't sound like clock, 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 so, okay. 
away from my antics. Um, what we're going to do now is going to measure all these parts. I'm going to show you something that I did that was a little extra. And you can do all this without any major tools. As a matter of fact, I did it with the tools right here in front of me. The reason I'm not doing it with the tools in front of you right now is because I don't feel like getting dusty. Yeah, that seems like an excuse, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, I've, I've already done this a bunch of times. So, you know, you can use a hand drill, just a simple little hand drill to get your hole started. If you have an electric drill, this little uh, tapered reamer here is the absolute most perfect thing for changing the size of a hole in PVC. It's really handy for that. And you can get hurt with this, although I find that I get hurt with it a lot less than I do even a regular drill bit. Um, here's a file. You can use a cardboard nail file instead of this if you'd like. So, you know, whether you have to buy these items or not, those don't actually equate into the cost of the product itself we're talking about making here. Um, and also, I did include some elastic. This elastic costed me about two bucks, um, but the amount of it, I figured it out and figured out how long this five yards was and how much of it I needed to use, and it round up to about 11 cents. So that's where we're at right there on this piece of elastic, which is not even necessary. So here's two parts that I spent money on that I did not have to have. I did it because of convenience and because of aesthetic. So it's up to you if you like it that way. At the end of the video, when you see this little guy playing, and you think, hey, I could do that. So here's a PVC cutter. So if you don't want to have to operate a really heavy saw, this thing here is one of the hardest PVC cutters to use. The ratchet ones are so much easier. They're a little bit more expensive. This one was super cheap. But you just kind of go around in circles and keep pressure on it. While you're keeping pressure on it, you twist it, and eventually it scores a line into it. And if you start twisting it backwards at that point, it'll start cutting into the line pretty well. There's a lot of different ways to use it. Once again, at this day and age, for some reason, lots of people post comments on how to use these things after I show you how to use them. You can use them however you like, so it's all good. Um, you'll notice too that I've got these couplings here, but they're smaller than the ones I'm showing you. And this is for a couple of reasons. Number one, on this type of flute, I prefer smaller couplings. And number two, the hardware store I went to only had the full size ones. Now that's telling you something. They make half size ones. I cut these couplings in like a little there, if you notice there's like a partition I don't know if you can see that up inside of there, there's a partition inside of it it keeps the pipe from sliding too far one way or the other I cut half of the length off from the partition to the end of the PVC um, so that I can make it shorter I did that on both sides so I've got like a half size coupling they sell half size couplings I'm going to repeat that now you can uh, buy those but I couldn't find them so I made my own so I've got two couplings, I've got my mouthpiece you don't have to have, piece of elastic you don't have to have, and then I've got three little sections of PVC here, what could be easier, and one little ring that I made that is split in half. So I'm going to give you some measurements. You guys put this thing together yourself. Super, super easy to do. We're going to start off with the bottom. This is the bottom piece of the PVC, and we're going to about three and a quarter inches. Okay, if you need to know what this is in metric, you can Google, uh, convert three and a quarter inches to millimeters, and it will come up with a solution for you. And if Google's not around at the time of this video, I'll be surprised because currently they own YouTube. And uh, <laughs> anyway, um, long story short, there's a way to figure this out. So, and I'm not even gonna tell you that 22 or 25 millimeters per inch, you can figure all that out. There's, there's ways to find this information. So it's three and a quarter inches long. This is once again, a piece of one inch PVC. Then this piece here is roughly three quarters of an inch. You can actually change the size of this one depending on how you want, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But it's just a piece of this same PVC. It's no different than this. It's been cut three quarters of an inch long, and then I cut a slit into one end of it. I guess into the side of it. Then there's another piece. This is the body of the flute, and we're going to go ahead and do a couple of things here. I'm going to tell you that number one, it is roughly eight and five eighths of an inch long and if you want to just stop the video and write down these measurements you can or you can listen to me to call them out it is good either way starting from what is my left hand here or the end of the tape measure which is probably your viewing from the right we're going to say it is one and an eighth inch to the center of this hole here this ain't rocket science i can't say that enough one and an eighth of an inch the next one is about two and an eighth. Don't worry about that increment. Just call it two and an eighth. It's just fine. 
The next hole, which I'm going to clip this down so I can show you, we're working on this hole right here, is four and a quarter inch. That's how far it is from the end of this piece of PVC. The next one, which is the second to last hole here, is five and five eighths of an inch. Five and five eighths of an inch. And the last one is six and let's call it three quarters just for giggles. It'll be okay. Six and three quarters. I've been making flutes for 33 years at the time this video was made. Don't worry about those incremental measurements. I've been using woodworking tools for the last 42 years of my life. <laughs> I appreciate your tips. I really do. I really do. And I appreciate you commenting them because then other people may benefit from them. If you post some tips, please make sure that they're good ones, safe ones, good ideas, you know. If you don't know if they're safe or good and you're just an armchair woodworker, you're welcome to post, but it's better to, you know, hang on to those ideas and test them out yourself and see if they work. Because a lot of us, a lot of people that either watch videos or make things have had a lot of experience anyway, <laughs> uh, to say the least. And I think we talked about the full length of this thing here was eight and three quarters. So that's that, that guy right there. The top piece, this one can vary a little bit, okay? Mine, which I know you guys, how far is it from here to there, is six inches long, okay? From this end of this PVC to this end of this PVC is six inches long. That almost doesn't even remotely matter as long as it is at least six inches long. If you made it nine inches long, you could throw this piece in the garbage. Or don't buy it. <laughs> I like it because it looks cool, anyway. So what I'm going to tell you right now, the most important thing is the distance from this piece right here to the center of this first hole, okay? The end to the center of this hole. The rest of this, you can make as long as you want. You can make it two feet long if you want. It'd be a long old flute for you. Anyway, so that measurement, let's call it four and three-eighths of an inch. This is for y'all who don't speak English. So you can see that right there, four and three eighths of an inch is about to the center of that hole. That is so critically important. The full length doesn't matter. And this all goes together with what I'm gonna tell you about the size of this ring. So in mine, I've got a little plug in there that is about a half inch long. You can kind of see it. I know it's ugly, forgive me. It's not a piece of the flute you're ever gonna look at, so don't ask why it's ugly. I probably wound up telling you anyway. But, um, but it's about a half inch long. You can actually make that plug an inch long if you'd like, as long as the center of this hole, as long as you make a square hole that is roughly, that is five sixteenths of an inch wide and square for that matter, uh, five sixteenths of an inch wide and square, as long as you make that hole that size, you can make this plug any size you want. And all I've done here is I've cut a rectangular section out of the PVC. I did that with a rotary tool, otherwise known as a Dremel. You can do it with an X-Acto knife, which I also use to clean it up and everything. You can use a number of tools. I have a mortising drill at home if you want to mortise it out. Um, you can make a round hole. A round hole will work. It really will, so that's okay. But the important thing is that you cut out an entire section of this right here and that when you put your plug in it, if your plug is an inch long, you'll need to make this here a little bit longer, okay? The important thing is that you have a 5 16 square right here that is centered from this to this, 4 and 3 eighths or whatever I said, <laughs> and uh, that you have a, at least a large enough opening back here to mask that same size. It needs to be the same size back here as it is up there or bigger. So this hole can be bigger, this hole 5 16 okay? Um, the reason that I'm using this thin wall PVC is because when you cut it, it only leaves a certain track thickness, and that's important uh, for the sound quality of this flute. And let's see what else is important. One other thing, when you put the plug, the little wooden plug in here, you can file down the edge of it right here, as I did, uh, as it goes into that all-important 5 16 of an inch sound hole, file it down with a file, and then you can take that same file and come underneath of the edge here. You see the edge? Um, I'm going to show you, I don't know if you can see that, you all might want to pause it and stare at it for 20 minutes, but, but uh, the edge of this file comes abruptly to a point right there, and you can um, just keep a real nice sharp edge. That's what we're looking for. 
And from back this way, you'll notice that I didn't really focus on that too much. You can tell because the edge of the file doesn't meet the top edge of the PVC. Y'all should know what I'm talking about. If you don't, go back and, and look over this video again because that part right there is easy to figure out. The reason I filed it down is because it created a nice, sharp, splitting edge of the flute. And that nice, sharp, splitting edge ensures a better sound quality, as well as this thin track, which is created by having a thin wall piece of PVC. Okay, I think we have covered just about everything. Now the hard part. Let's just slap this sucker together, right? If you've drilled all these holes, oh, I didn't tell you the whole diameter. I know that everybody always wants to know the whole diameter. This one here, so let's start right there is roughly three eighths of an inch. This one too is also about three eighths of an inch. Anybody that's ever laid PVC pipe over a couple hundred yards know that typically as you go further out, you need to make the PVC pipe smaller in diameter to keep your pressure constant. Unless some burglary somebody another. But uh, anyway, uh, the next one here is about five sixteenths. So we got three eighths, three eighths. That's those two that are close together. And then we have five sixteenths on the next hole, 5 16 here and 5 16 there. That's the diameter of these holes, which I accomplished by using this little dude right here. It's got some measurements on it, but it's not really super critical. Once again, if you have a, a 5 16 inch bit or if you have a 3 8 bit, it might make quick work of this. Drilling PVC is dangerous with an electric hand drill or with a drill press, so take your time, be careful. Yes, there are ways to chalk it up on a drill press or even a hand drill, but you know, I'm not here to teach that. I'm here to teach how to make flutes. So, um, you make these two holes about three eighths, and these three down here are going to be about uh, five sixteenths. If you are a modern Native American flute player and you are so set on having that hole right there, don't drill it out on this PVC. It is not worth your time. You can play that same note by doing this right here. Okay, so other videos that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap this guy together, and I'm going to show you exactly how to put it together. It's super easy stuff. The first thing I'm going to put is the bottom piece because that seems pretty simple, right? I look in there and you can see that it lined up with the inside edge. Easy stuff. Now, this would be the point where you would put your uh, piece of string in there if you want to do that. The way that you put your piece of string in there, check it out. Well, elastic cord, excuse me. Um, hold it out like this. Push it in there like that. And look, now we have a piece of PVC on a bungee. What you want to do is you want to leave the length of this bungee full until you get all this stuff put together. Now, two, if you want to seal this at this point, this is one of the pieces that I would recommend sealing. Um, I would, once again, use some cyanacrylic glue, put it around in there, use PVC cement, whatever you like, and you can do that. Hold this little piece back here with your finger and then push this in place like so. And that's really it. I mean, as long as it's in place, you're in good shape. We now have a cord that's going to be inside of our flute. It's not going to damage the sound. Don't worry about that. Um, and it's on this piece right here. Okay, so the next thing you'll do is you'll put your larger body together. And, you know, I probably ought to preach what it is that I'm teaching here. And just go ahead and show you outright exactly how you do that. Because a lot of people are like, how am I going to do that? So there's a number of different ways. You can start like I just showed you and then just feed this down through the tube. Probably the simplest thing so you don't get lost. Um, so we have that right there. I'm putting this dude in there like that. Then I'm gonna drop this piece down inside of the one with all the holes in it, okay? These are your fingerings, by the way. And look at that, it fits right in there like so. This is something I wouldn't cement together. The reason I wouldn't do that is because the purpose of this video is to make a flute you can take apart. And so we have a piece of, of elastic coming out of the end here. We have a flute that you can take apart right in this midsection. The next thing you're going to want to do, okay, let me see here, is you're going to leave, let's see here. <laughs> you guys are like, weren't you prepared for this? This is the part that people start turning the video. <laughs> anyway, so you feed this through here. If you've ever been a guy before, raise your hand. So, anyway, guys do this kind of thing. So this piece is another one that you don't want to seal in. And by putting it in there, you still have a electric cord that's really kind of bungee and easy to go. And it's not, not glued to the center piece here, okay? And then you can pull this out a little bit, and then you can shove your other piece in, okay? Easy peasy. I've got a, other videos on how to do this part of the 
uh, flute channel here in, in track uh, on wood, on bamboo, on river cane, on PVC, on whatever. Uh, there's a number of ways you can do it, so don't get hung up on this particular video and solving that problem. So now we've got most of it put together. Really cool stuff. Uh, one other thing you might want is a popsicle stick, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So at this point, we're almost to where it'll play, and like I said, if we take this part apart, check it out, and if we take this part apart, we have a nice center section. It's almost like one of those little puppies. You don't have to do that. You can leave it without the, the uh, bungee there. You don't need the bungee cord. It's just kind of for so you don't lose these parts while they're in your backpack, but however, it's all good. And they're all perfectly sealed up in there. And so now we have this ring made out of the same one inch PVC. I'm gonna slip it over the edge and I'm gonna push it over this right here. And you'll notice if you've gone this far, it's gonna make a sound. And it sounds pretty dang good. It's, it's a little breathy is what we call it, a little airy sounding, uh, but it still has a nice full sound. Hence the piece of uh, popsicle stick here. Now, if you notice, I've got another one on the table that's a little bit larger. And a lot of times we think bigger is better. That's probably the reason you're wanting to learn how to make a low E flute in the first place is because you think bigger is better. Personally, I love these little guys. They're really great. But a um, bigger piece of wood is not going to help you any. A smaller piece that just barely covers this track here is going to be what you want. And the reason is uh, when you put this piece of wood on top of it, if you can see in there, it makes a much smaller air channel. Let me put this other one back on for you to see. It makes a much smaller air channel than it does when you slide this piece of PVC over it. Okay, It's because the, the PVC is rounded right and this little piece here is rounded which makes a much larger larger channel so a simple little invention that uh, really will save you and what I'm going to do is kind of push this off of it like this with my thumbs you see that pushing that off of it like that right there and then I'm going to slide this piece of the smaller piece of wood it's about a half inch wide you know and it doesn't really matter how thick it is it's a popsicle stick looks like that and then we just clamp that dude back down on top of it now we're going to slide this back over it and kind of line it up a little bit there. If you notice, it lines up with that. And you can push forward, and if it continues to push for you, that's great. You can do any other alignments you need with a little prying implement. Always remember that National Geographic's movie with the monkey that had a stick that was fishing termites out of a a termite mound. Right, let's go back and do this one more time. It is a little difficult, don't get me wrong. 33 years of woodworking. <laughs> anyway, uh, slide this dude back just a pinch. You want to be able to see, you want to be able to see the edge of this plug inside of there. And you want to make sure also that your wood is big enough that it covers this edge of the track and this edge of the track uh, fairly well. Okay, so that's probably good enough. We can Hold that in place, slide it forward. Now we can use our little pushing implement and slide it forward. And try not to slide it too far. Slide this guy back in. You know, this is probably where I would have normally sped this video up a little bit, but it's not necessary. Like I say, it's a trick. And the reason you don't want to use the bigger one, which is so much easier to set in place, is because the bigger one rounds off more than the small piece of flat wood does. And when I say round off, I mean, it, it begins taking on the shape of this top piece of PVC here. So, fortunately for y'all, I have learned all the tricks of struggling with this, and I'm trying to show you how not to have to do that too much. There we go. Perfect. Let's see if it plays. Not a good sound, so let's slide it back just a little bit more. Just a smidgen. There we go. Let's see if that did it. I think that's better. Oh yeah, there is one other thing that I really should show you. And I knew this all along, I just wanted to let you know, trial and error, this is where you're going to go. I took the liberty of carefully sanding the edge of this piece of wood on one end. The end that I stuck in there, on purpose, uh, was not uh, sanded, as I hope you could tell. And when I did that, I sanded this edge here, I created kind of a little bevel, just like I created a bevel inside of here that goes down. I've got one there that goes up. And that's really where that piece belongs. 
with that little bevel. And that is a trick I have talked about in so many of my other videos. And now I'm just going to do this the easy way since so I'll let y'all see me struggle for a minute. Put this back over here. Here we go. Et voila. Slide it back a little bit. Let's see if that sounds any better. Of course, I've done all this and wasted all this time showing you how to do this and bragging and all this crazy stuff to find out it sounds terrible. pretty cool actually the more I think and the other thing too if you use a reducer like this guy here to small up your mouthpiece a little bit you want to make sure that this doesn't get pushed that way when you put the reducer on so you can actually glue the reducer in place and leave this loose I would really recommend leaving that part loose uh, but glue the reducer in place and then you can slide this on and off and change it however you like in the future if you decide you need another piece of wood or need it whatever you can do something different um, and likewise, uh, with this setup here right now, once again, you can take it apart from here and from here and leave this centerpiece alone and all by itself with a cord in the middle of it, and then um, you can play it. And honestly, the sound doesn't really make a lot of difference with this cord, so you can use one or don't use one. Wow, that sounds a lot better, doesn't it? seen the video on how to play that yet it's out there so uh, anyway I hope that you all have enjoyed this I hope you benefit from it in some way having a flute that you can break down uh, that's still modestly you know moderately I guess uh, somewhat is another way we could say it connected there by that budgie cord which once again isn't completely necessary like I say you can do this so many different ways so many different versions of it you could probably make a drone easily the same way if you put two of these pieces together uh, and had you a mouthpiece uh, coupler up at the top that was like a uh, two-way or something. I mean, there's so many different things you could do. But this is just really for your inspiration and to give you an idea of where you can take this. Uh, this, the whole flute, is about eight and three-quarters inches long. You can take it anywhere. It actually fits in my back pocket. I mean, those of you who have uh, put cell phones in your back pocket for a long time, they're probably stretched out enough now anyway. <laughs> but... Uh, this uh, little guy here, something you can take with you. Once again, don't have to worry about pieces getting lost. If you didn't use the cord, which I may not decide to keep the cord myself, um, you can still glue the ends on the particular pieces I discussed, and it would be very convenient so that you didn't lose them in case they come apart in your, in your bag or what have you. But uh, for a little flute that you can assemble in a matter of seconds, you know, and I've made these in other keys. I should mention that. Patent pending. No, not patent. There's lots of things you can do with this little flute. I hope y'all are doing well. Please take care. Please enjoy yourself. Be very careful. I've seen people in movies use these things in really bad ways, so don't hurt yourself. I'll see you again very soon. So we just made this really cool little flute and I want to let you know that there are plans and schematics in my book. The Art of Native American Flute Making galore. I mean, there's just so many. There's even in the back, there's not a plan for making this break apart guy because this one was designed after this book, but there's a plan for making a PVC bow staff flute, which is incredibly cool. I mean, it is like this huge bow staff flute that you can make out of schedule 40 PVC. So you don't have to look for anything that's irrigation PVC. But there's schematics in here on how to make just about everything that I make. Uh, the measurements are in standard and in metric, and it is ready for you. There's in-depth explanations 
Look, check it out. Here are some pictures on how to size up your wood when you go to, to make a flute the way that I make flutes uh, with hardwood. So there's uh, in-depth explanations on how to do this and how to do that. There's a whole chapter on nothing but what materials you can find um, and what you could use to make said flute with. So there's a lot of really great stuff in here. There's a lot of full color pictures, like 200 and something. And then in the back, it's got scales and fingering charts. I mean, just about anything you could imagine. And plus, it was written by somebody who's been making flutes for 35 years. So anyway, I hope you guys, uh, like I said, find some use and uh, help support us as well. We greatly appreciate you. Y'all take care. Mm -hmm.